Hello everybody and welcome back. As you can see I've started to put these dividing walls in. We're in the breeding section of the loft at the moment and I've got one more to go behind me over there in the race section and then I've just got to fill up this little gap behind us at the top here and we might be able to get some pigeons into this loft today. So I'm going to keep working and start filming again soon. myself a little bit of mesh to try and block off this gap up here. Let's see how we went. I think I did a pretty good job. I'll just need a smaller section for this final gap up here, but obviously no birds are going to escape through there. I'll cut myself two more of these, we'll put them up, and then we might be able to fit a few birds in here. Alright, well, I'll put some mesh up here. There is still a small gap here, but I don't imagine a bird will be able to get through there. Hopefully that isn't going to be some famous last words. I've also done it for this one, and the same, I've left this gap here. I will close this off eventually, but for now, it's no big deal. I haven't done the cladding of the walls yet, that will be done. I've just closed off these dividers at the moment. Timber's a little bit too expensive to buy all of this plywood to clad the walls at once, but that will be done. Anyway, now that these two sections are secure, I might go and get some pigeons to put them in here. Alright, so in this far section, I've moved this pair in. This is the pair of the poor hen who's lost her foot and the cockbird who has the cancer in his leg. I think they might find that a bit more comfortable in this cage rather than in their little box. She's enjoying having a flap around. The very first thing they did was make a nice big mess of their outside section. But I'm sure they'll enjoy it in here. I don't have any perches up yet, I've just left them a little blank to lean on. But like I said, I think they'll find this a bit more comfortable than being in their breeding box. But I do have another section available. There's this second stock section. So let's go and grab another bird for here. Alright, here's my little red and blue mosaic. He has been in quarantine for about a month now. So he's going to be quite happy to come out of there. For the moment he can have this little section to himself. Let's let him go and see, see how he finds it. Down there where he's decided to sit, you can see a little bit of water has actually gotten in. That is obviously something that I'll have to try and deal with. I don't want too much water getting into this loft. I'm thinking of putting some shutters up to keep the weather out of that front section. I might have to make a few sets of shutters. One that can completely block the weather out and another that can sort of shade it off a little bit without completely closing the loft off. These guys are enjoying being in the new cage where they can flap around a bit more easily. But let's go outside and have a look at the other birds. In my last video I said that I thought it was a little bit boring showing them too much, but you guys in the comments said that you want to see them. But in the comments you guys told me that you do want to keep seeing them. So let's go outside and look at the rest of the birds. These guys are just changing shift. I checked those eggs this morning and they are fertile, both of them. So hopefully one of these is a nice little red cock bird which will be very useful for our yellow racing pigeon project. So in two and a half weeks, I should have two little babies to show you in this nest. And speaking of baby hatching, as you can tell by all these shells, that's exactly what we have here in our red nest. These little ones hatched this morning, and they are our first babies from this year's breeding season. Now I'm not keeping these babies, they are for a friend of mine, so these ones won't be the first racing pigeons I bred for this loft. That honour will go to my favourite old red cock when his eggs hatch. And we have two little healthy recessive red babies. You can tell looking at the ring around their beak that they are recessive reds. Obviously they will be recessive reds because they came from a pair of recessive red parents. But it is a handy tip when you're trying to breed reds. They will have this little red or brown ring around the end of their beak. Which is a nice easy way that you can usually tell if you've bred recessive reds. Anyway, let's put these guys back under their parents. Well, this loft is still far from complete. I've obviously still got to do the walls and definitely the perches. And we'll need to put some breeding boxes in this stock section as well. But it is very nice to finally have some birds in here. 
I'm aiming, and it is just a goal at the moment, it's not definite yet, but I'm aiming to have the rest of my birds in this loft in about a week. So I'll definitely keep you guys updated then. But for now, thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time.